Hello everyone, my name is Simon and if you like, and today I wanted to do a little bit of a tutorial slash video thing, but I wanted to talk about something pretty cool. So, uh, recently I tried to uh, do a live stream with Rudy Robberos, but me and him had a couple of problems doing some commentary stuff with RE Central, so we just had to make it into a video, which you can see on his channel. However, we still wanted to do that live stream, so I wanted to figure out a way to do it properly. Uh, the problem we had was using virtual audio cable. It's a program that is good in certain areas, but sometimes don't just bugs out and it costs money to get a lot of it. And that's what I sort of want to focus on here. I want to show you guys how you can uh, do use virtual audio cable sort of without the money. Uh, it's basically replacement software. Now it'll require you a little bit more work than you theoretically would need with a virtual audio cable. But in the end, it's going to be worth it. So I have a couple of web pages open here. There's actually just two. Uh, so the first one is VB slash audio software. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. I believe these guys have two websites because I think you can just go to vbaudio.com. Yeah, then just refresh your pages per so at orange. It's a French, it's some French people, uh, but they have one thing that we want here, um, which is audio apps. So we hit that and we scroll down here to the Weeby Audio Virtual Cable, which you can already hear that that sounds pretty familiar, right? Yeah. So basically what this does is it adds a cable, uh, it adds a playback and a new recording device that are both virtual. So what you want to do is you just want to download, hit this download button right here and it's going to download this zip file. Um, I'm just going to use Windows built-in zip file because every single Windows computer will have its own zip thing. However, if you need something better, I would recommend 7-zip or WinRAR, but WinRAR costs money, 7-zip is free, see the difference. Or, if you don't like the design of 7-zip, I would recommend PZIP. I'll leave a link to all those in the description. So what you'll see here is a lot of files, so we're going to go and extract these, we'll just make them in that folder. Um, I would recommend you to remove any of these folders. So what you'll see now is that we have a couple of things here. There are two set of files. If you're running 32-bit, you want to run this one. Uh, this one automatically runs in administrator mode, so you don't need to worry about that. However, if you're running 64-bit, this is the version you want to go with. The only thing to note is that this thing is not automatically running as an administrator. So make sure to go here and hit Run as admin Administrator. And now you're going to hit Yes, and it's going to pop up here with this image. And you can just hit this Install Driver button. And boom, it's going to say that it's done. And you might reboot your system to finalize installation. Since this is a tutorial, I will not re uh, start my computer. However, I would recommend you to do this. Uh, it depends on the computers. I found that Windows 8 doesn't seem to require it. However, I would still recommend you to do so just to make sure you don't get any problems. So don't come screaming to me because, oh, I didn't restart my system, but it doesn't work. Obviously, it's probably because you didn't restart. Um, another thing to note is that you can actually get a cable A and cable B um, by donating either Euro and USD, and you can choose yourself. This is donationware. So the the upper one here is completely free. You don't have to pay anything for that. However, if you do want, if you need more cables, like you need either two more cables, you can donate. Uh, I am donated like one euro, um, which I wish I would have donated more, and I might actually donate again. Because um, I, I think software like this needs to be higher up there. Donation where it's definitely something I like, because I feel people deserve money for the work they do. But at the same time, I wish it would be more free software out there that is useful. Unlike virtual audio cable, which charges way too much money. So definitely, if you have the money and, you know, want to be a nice guy, donate. You'll feel good about, with yourself. Uh, but you don't have to. You can feel free to just download the software. But uh, I would definitely recommend you to donate if you can. I'm not telling you to absolutely do that if not you're a terrible person. But, yeah. Uh, so you'll get two more inputs. You don't need that for this tutorial. But it could be useful in other situations. Um, so. Uh, the next thing you're going to need, which this one might seem a little bit weird to you guys. Um, is this noise gator um, or noise gate? <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is a little bit crumbly. Um, this is on SourceForge.net, which means it's completely open source and it's completely free. This is no donationware, nothing like that. It's just a straight up app. It's available for Mac, Linux, and Windows, which is always cool and incredibly useful. So we'll definitely remember that. So um, uh, there's not really much information about this, so. Bear in mind, it does say it's virus free. I completely trust this. Um, and the reason I'm also choosing to use Noise Gator for this particular tutorial is because it's actually kind of useful for live streams and just in general. Because you're most likely going to be in the most cases, you're going to use st things like Skype. And the thing with Skype is that it um, 
uh, the thing with Skype is that uh, it adds a lot of background noise and stuff. So this will actually remove that, but we'll come back to that. So just download this uh, .exe file here. Just hit here, and wait a couple of seconds. Um, sort of like a mirror type of thing. And there we go. You want to hit keep. Now there's an important to note. Make sure you keep this file. I know that in um, programs like Internet Explorer, it tells you to, if you want to run or save the file, you want to hit save as this is a Java file. And Java files normally don't need an installer. It's similar to how Minecraft, uh, it doesn't require an installer. So just put this on your desktop as it would be a program. Or you could put it somewhere in your documents and then just make a shortcut on the desktop by just right-clicking and then just hit create shortcut. So basically what you want to do is you want to open up Noise Skater. And that's going to take a little while, and then you get this pretty nice window here. Now, the thing is, if you're going to have two microphones, like say I want to record my microphone and then also record, basically want to record uh, Skype, as in the stereo mix, the sound of my computer. The problem is RE Central only allows for one microphone input, which is normally your own microphone, and then the game input, which it automatically does. So what if you have a Skype guy that you want to talk to while you're live streaming? That's where Noise Skater comes in. So the reason you want this is actually because you can open two windows and still send to the same thing. So basically, first of all, I want to explain this. Um, uh, I want to explain the new thing we've installed. So if we scroll down here now, you'll see there's a cable input and a cable output. So basically, the way this work is that on the playback, make sure like uh, anything that goes into the cable input will be combined and outputted through cable output. This is important to note. So if I now go ahead and go to input here and say microphone to Samson C01U, which is the main microphone we're using right now, and then you tell it that the output is going to be cable input right here. Uh, if you would have a A and B, you would have those there. I do have them, but I uninstalled it for these videos. And uh, for the second one here, you're going to choose, uh, for example, as I said, stereo makes for Skype. Um, and then you're choosing the same input. But I'm actually going to connect my headset mic here. And the reason for that is because the stereo mix on my computer is not working with headsets as far as I know. And I'm having serious problems connecting this right now. Let me... Oh my god. There we go. Connect that there. And then we're going to choose my uh, microphone Realtek High Definition. Choose that and it's going to go into the same input. Now what I'm going to command you guys also to do is to set a threshold. Because the way the threshold works is it'll notice when you're not talking. So it'll know it if you're not talking. And the threshold basically steers what is not talking and what is talking to remove the noise. Uh, so because of that, I would recommend you to set the threshold pretty low to make sure it picks up your audio at all times. So you don't get jumpy audio. However, it's quite useful though because if you're watching cutscenes, if you just shut up, the microphone won't even pick up. So that's what I actually use this for uh, when I do my commentary. I actually just, uh, for example, when I record with um, Avermedia now, I actually use Noise Skater and just make sure that I don't say anything in cutscenes and I don't even have to cut the audio in the cutscenes because normally I'll just do it. And if I have to, I'll cut the audio as well. But for example, if you're using the Elgato Game Capture, which doesn't allow you to use separate audio tracks, uh, that's incredibly useful because it doesn't allow you to set separate... Uh, basically, it doesn't allow you to get it as a separate audio and video file. It'll actually have to have both. So that's where that's useful. So we go ahead and just put in these uh, thresholds here, 5 and 5, and then we... Hit activate. So you'll see that it says status is open. That's because it's open. So if I just shut up a little bit now. You'll see that it switched to status closed. Uh, the reason that it did that was because the threshold went below 5. So the threshold went way between how high you're talking or how far away you're from the microphone. So if it's open, it'll basically send the audio in there. And then we go and activate this one. Uh, we'll see that this one also is active because my microphone is right here. However, if I shut off long enough now, you'll see that it'll go down in a little second. There you go. It's a little bit jumpy, so I think I set this one down to like three. Just adjust the threshold depending on how weak or good your microphone is, uh, or microphones. So theoretically, if you would want Skype to be recorded, your stereo mix or something else, I might bring a tutorial on how you could do this, uh, record Skype in a different way than stereo mix, because there are ways to do that too. Um, so what you want to do now, you can also hit this mute button to mute the mic if you need that, but I wouldn't recommend that because if you just shut up, it'll just automatically mute it. So for demonstrational purposes, I'm going to open up Audacity here. Um, and I'm just going to set the microphone to be the cable output right here. And you're going to hear some pops around you with that. Now what I want to add here, uh, kind of important, is that you can have as many noise getter windows open as you just want. So 
if you have four people that you want talking at the same time or you have like two microphones connected because you have a friend sitting next to you like you're doing a podcast in the same room you could totally use this and just plug all the different microphones through this and just send them to one input it's incredibly useful so that's all for you to do so uh the next step now is to go ahead and actually make sure that's there and then we're going to go ahead and record now and then i'm going to play that off to you potatoes is a free way of getting free money so what you'll go notice now that I use two mics that are both recording my voice is we'll notice a slight echo, uh, but that just shows that it works. So let's play this. Potatoes is a free way of getting free money. For some reason, it didn't really sound like an echo, but let's try it again. Hello, everyone. My. Hello, everyone. My. Well, the point is, they should theoretically both be recording. It would be easier if I would have had a second signal. However, as I said, my stereo mix isn't working. I'll leave a tutorial on how you could theoretically fix that. Another thing that I should probably add before I end this is, if you don't have... Um, if you can't find stereo mix, what I would want you to do is just go here, right-click, and hit Show Disable Devices. So now, I just turned that off. And stereo mix is normally on most Windows 8 computers, and some Windows 7 computers is disabled. So if I just go here and hit show disabled devices, you'll see devices like this mic 2 and mic 1, which these aren't plugged in. Um, I'm just using them as examples. So if we go ahead and, so if you would go ahead and just go here and hit, uh, for some reason it says disable it, even though it's already disabled. Basically, if you right click it on it, when you when it's disabled, you can hit enable. So stereo mix is just disabled by default. However, you could just go here and just hit enable, or in this case disable, and then enable, and you would have stereo mix in case you don't have it. However, on most Windows 8 computers, you may run into problems, and I'll show you guys how you can fix those in another video. Hope this tutorial helped you. This can be useful for RE Central, which only supports one audio stream. As I said, it can be useful for podcasters to have more than one voice. It is useful in a lot of scenarios, and I hope this helped you out. All of this, it's completely free, but I would definitely recommend you to donate to the people making the VB Audio app by hitting this donate button right here, which will lead you to PayPal, so it's completely safe, because everyone knows that PayPal is completely safe. And I'm going to have to censor that now. Great. So um, I'll see you guys in the next video I make.